it doesn't even make any sense! The wizard competition in Wizards of Waverly Place makes absolutely no sense. Wizards of Waverly Place was a sitcom that aired on the Disney Channel from October 2007 to January 2012. The show ran for four seasons and they even made a movie. The series follows Alex Russo, a teenage girl, as she navigates life, family, and friendships while training to become a wizard. Um, this guinea pig is now not a dove with wings to fill its slot. <laughs> Oh, it's a pretty dove. No. Ooh, it's a pretty brick. The series was massively successful and propelled Selena Gomez into superstardom. The show focuses on the three Russo siblings as they study and train to compete in their family's wizard competition. This was one of my favorite shows growing up, and I recently rewatched the entire series on Disney+. Plus. After watching every episode, there are some things that I have to get off my chest. Because while I do think this show is one of the best series the Disney Channel has produced, I found it very frustrating because of the numerous inconsistencies in the show's lore. I've always been a huge fan of fantasy series series, novels, and movies, and for me, I think the rules of the world are the most important thing when approaching a fantasy, specifically when it comes to magic. What you can't do is even more important than what you can do. This helps us as the audience to fully immerse ourselves in the world and solve problems along with our protagonist. However, throughout watching the show, I noticed so many inconsistencies with the rules of the wizarding world. It feels like just yesterday you were turning a brick into a rabbit. <laughs> Edge Bono you Good. Thank you, Justin. That is how you execute the duplication spell properly. The biggest of which was the wizard competition. Which brings me to my first big question. How do you qualify to participate in the wizard competition? Since the pilot episode of the show, we were made aware that there was a wizard competition that the three Russo siblings would have to compete in. Every wizarding family conducts a wizard competition, the winner of which would be allowed to keep their powers and become a full wizard. The losers would no longer be wizards and become mortals. Throughout the show, we learn more about the wizard competition, specifically how each sibling would have to qualify to be able to participate. In the earlier seasons, it seemed that participation in the wizard competition was a given and that each sibling would be allowed to participate regardless of their performance in their wizard studies. Emphasis on wizard training seemed to be more about how well they would be able to compete in the competition, with the implication being that the harder they studied and mastered their wizard training, the better chance they would have of winning the competition and becoming the family wizard. This was why for so long throughout the show, Justin was was considered to be the clear front runner for winning the competition because out of all of his siblings he was the best student. The siblings even had to take exams and tests and would receive grades and report cards despite not attending a wizarding school such as Wizstick. Wizard training seemed to mirror school in real life wherein the siblings would take different classes covering different wizarding topics and would take tests and exams to determine how much they learned. In season 1 episode 17 report card, the siblings take a wizard exam that is graded by Wistick headmaster Professor Crumbs. Justin gets an A, Max gets a C, and Alex gets an F. Trying to avoid letting her parents know she failed the exam, she uses magic to turn them into guinea pigs. Professor Crumbs then takes away Alex's magic and threatens to not return them to her because of her irresponsibility. He even says this spell that I thought was really funny. You haven't acted with any responsibility. Say goodbye to your magical ability. No! It's like the wizarding equivalent of being grounded. Without magic, this would mean that Alex, by default, would be disqualified from participating in the wizard competition. Justin intervened and turned Professor Crumbs into a guinea pig before he could leave with Alex's powers. After turning him back, he pleads for Alex, believing that fixing her mistakes and training alongside her makes him a better wizard. Much to his chagrin, Professor Crumbs agrees to allow Alex to continue her wizard training and returns her powers. That episode was really insightful in giving us a better understanding of the wizard training and the wizard competition. Still, at that point, it was still implied that despite getting bad grades, Alex and Max would still be able to compete in the competition. The only caveat being that they would probably have a difficult time winning if they did not take their studies more seriously. Also, it seems that there is an age requirement for the wizard competition, as Max was not always in the running to compete. In season 1 episode 11, Potion Commotion, Max Max's full powers come in, and with that, he is officially in the running to compete in the wizard competition. It's all you, hey, your full powers are here. Now you're in the competition. 
competition with us. So what? I'm still gonna win and be the one that keeps his powers. The full wizard powers seem to be tied to puberty, as all the Russo siblings eventually got their full powers by the time they were teenagers. Also in the episode, we learn that Max is on lesson number 5 of his wizard training, while Alex and Justin are on lesson number 372 implying that there are different learning materials for the siblings based on their level and age. Though that is not supported in future episodes, as each sibling learns the exact same spells and lessons at the same time, and these lesson numbers were never brought up again. Still, we see where participation in the wizard training is essential in performing well in the wizard competition. However, this idea changes as the series goes on. In Season 3, Episode 3, Monster Hunter, Justin masters his 5,000th spell, and it's announced that that officially concludes his wizard training, meaning Justin is able to move on to independent wizard studies, which is essentially a wizarding degree, where he specializes in a specific field of study. It also seems to be a non-mandatory requirement. So the implication here being that in order to complete the wizard training, each sibling would have to master 5,000 spells. When Alex asks how many spells she had mastered, she's told only 100, which is a bit contradictory to the fact that like I said before, we saw that Alex and Justin were both on lesson number 372 back in season 1, though that could just mean that despite matriculating to other lessons, she had failed to master the spells. So with the conclusion of Justin's wizard training, Alex becomes more and more nervous that she would not be able to win the wizard competition because of how far ahead her brother was. Again, the implication being that she would still be able to participate, just very unlikely to actually win. Since then, she decides to buckle down and take her wizard training seriously and start studying to catch up to Justin. Hey! What you doing? Studying. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> even saving him with all she'd learned by the end of the episode. All of that goes out the window in Season 4, Episode 1, Alex Tells the World. In the previous episode, the Russos are captured by the US government under the suspicion of being wizards. Justin tells the government agents that they are in fact a family of wizards after the agents convinced him there was an impending alien invasion that they needed their help with. This was obviously a ruse. However, the Russos manage to escape, but the government invades the wizarding world and captures other wizards, including Professor Crumbs. After escaping, Alex feels the only way to get help for Professor Crumbs and the others is to expose wizardry to the public in order to get support. Alex exposes wizardry to a group of reporters, but it's then revealed that this was all a convoluted test as part of the Russos' wizard training which apparently was newly added as Jerry does not recall ever having to do that during his training. Apparently, Professor Crumb staged the whole scenario to test whether or not the siblings would expose wizardry, because that's just how he gets his kicks. What? So you just made all of that up? Who does that? <laughs> the boss man does. Alex and Justin failed because they both exposed wizardry, but not only did they fail the test, they would also be prosecuted because exposing magic to non-wizards is a crime in the wizarding world. Which is just so incredibly funny to me because it's like taking a final exam where if you pass, you get to graduate, but if you fail, you not only don't get to graduate, they also throw you in jail. And I'm sorry, but how is that not entrapment? This man fabricated the whole scenario of the demise of the wizard world and not only failed them, but is also going to convict them in a court of law? Over a test? Anyways, after a quick trial, Alex and Justin are found guilty and their punishment introduces something that we have never heard of in the three seasons of the show. Alex Rousseau, you are now demoted from level 3 down to level 1 in your family wizard competition. But that's all the way back to the beginning! And Justin Rousseau, you have been demoted from level 5 back to level 1. Level 1?! That's right, there's levels to this shit. So apparently each wizard in training has a level and Justin was level 5 while Alex and Max were level 3. And at first I thought, well okay that kinda makes sense because Justin mastered 5000 spells so he's a level 5 wizard. So for every 1000 spells you master, you earn a new level. Except no, that cannot be how that works because otherwise how could you demote someone a level? Like even if Justin is a level 1 wizard now, he still already mastered 5000 spells. Like he still has all of that knowledge, you can't just take that back from him unless you do some wizardry mind erase, which we never see them do. So if the levels are determined by knowledge, which are tested by exams and tests, 
Couldn't Justin just retake all the exams since he already knows everything? But we do get somewhat of an answer because in the very next episode, we learn something that completely contradicts all of that. In season 4 episode 2, Alex Gives Up, Alex and Justin, having been demoted to level 1 wizards, need to find ways to get back in the competition, as Max is a level 3 wizard, which means he's now the front runner for the competition. And this is where it all gets crazy, because before, it didn't seem like knowledge or test grades were the requirements to compete in the wizard competition, just that the nature of the competition would make the least trained wizard less likely to win. But now it seems that in order to even be allowed to compete in the competition, each wizard needs to be at a minimum entry level requirement, Max is now at level 3, Justin and Alex are now at level 1, so presumably each sibling would need to be at least a level 3 wizard to be able to participate in the competition. So that raises the question again, how is the level of a wizard determined? Which is why I said it couldn't just be the knowledge or training of a wizard, because Justin's already done with his wizard training. You can't unlearn those 5,000 spells he learned. But apparently, which we learned in this episode, the level of a wizard is determined by points that they earn throughout their studies. So that's how this all works now. It's just a point system. So Justin and Alex's problem is that they would not be able to earn enough points in time to increase their level back to the assumed level 3 requirement in order to qualify to participate in the competition. So now they both have to find a way to earn enough points to compete. So Justin decides to become a wizard tutor as a way of earning extra credit and additional points to put him back in the competition. And Alex decides to take Justin's delinquent class as a way for her to earn enough points to also get back in the competition. Now, it gets a little crazy from here, but just stick with me. So, Alex eventually gets back in the competition because in the episode Wizards vs. Angels, she saves the whole world from the Angel of Darkness. And in season 4, episode 16, Wizard of the Year, Alex is crowned Wizard of the Year for defeating the Angels of Darkness and is receiving an award and banquet in her honor. But also, she is reinstated in her wizard competition. Wizard of the Year, her own banquet, and we have to make a video to see how great she is. Anything else for Alex? Ooh, thanks for reminding me, kid. Because of your heroic act, you're back in your family's wizard competition. I can't believe I almost forgot that. <laughs> Wait, I'm back in the competition? That means I could be the family wizard. So Alex, through being crowned Wizard of the Year, earns enough points to put her back through the threshold and again in the running to be the family's full wizard. Now Justin is still out of the competition, he still doesn't have enough points, but in season 4 episode 19, Justin's back in, through successfully passing all his delinquent students, he earns enough points to rejoin the competition. So now every Russo sibling is in the running to compete in the family competition again. Alex has enough points. Justin has enough points, and Max has enough points. But then, in the final episode, season 4, episode 29, who will be the family wizard? Professor Crumbs flashes in and says this. I understand Alex performed a selfless act without using magic. You just completed your final requirement, enabling all of you to begin your family wizard competition. Alex, through performing a selfless deed without the use of magic, the selfless deed here being her cooking her family dinner, she has now fulfilled the final requirement and now the wizard competition can finally take place. So just fuck all that point shit. None of the points mattered because Alex did a selfless act without magic which was the last requirement. So it doesn't matter who's at what level, it doesn't matter who has how many points, Alex did something random, so now it's time for the wizard competition. And you may be saying, well, maybe they all had to get enough points to qualify and then they had to fulfill these arbitrary requirements so the competition could start. But that also would be wrong because Alex fulfilling a requirement to trigger the start of the competition only makes sense if the competition didn't already have a set date. But it did. Which leads me to my next question. When is the wizard competition? Another huge inconsistency surrounding the wizard competition is when exactly the wizard competition would take place. Throughout the earlier seasons of the show, it was always implied that the wizard competition was a set date and time. 
Our first hint at this was in the pilot episode when Justin bragged that he would win the competition and become the family wizard, to which Jerry responded that it wouldn't be for a long time. The wizard competition is mentioned constantly throughout the show as it is the event that all the siblings are training for, but the implication being that it would not be for a long time. That changed in season 3 where mentions of the wizard competition indicated that it would be sometime soon. Part of Alex's motivation to study and take her wizard training more seriously during season 3 was just in completing his wizard training while she was still so far behind. She needed to be able to catch up with him in time for the competition, signaling to us, the audience, that the competition was fast approaching and that the siblings knew exactly when it was. Every member of the family also seemed to be aware of the fact that the competition would happen sometime soon. This was even further supported in season 4 when Alex and Justin were demoted to level 1 wizards. During the season 4 premiere, they explicitly state that being demoted to level 1 would mean that neither of them would have enough time to catch up in time for their family wizard competition. But Max is a level three. How are we going to catch up to him? It would be nearly impossible. This meant that not only was the competition sooner than we thought, but that everyone knew the exact date of when it would be. This was outrightly confirmed in season four, episode five, Three Maxes and a Little Lady. In this episode, Alex is officially motivated to rejoin the competition after learning that mortals are forbidden from dating werewolves, meaning in order for her to continue her relationship with Mason, she would have to remain a wizard. Max, so far ahead of his siblings in the wizard competition, is invited to join an exclusive sophisticated wizard society. The members, though charming, treat him as their personal jokester and convinces him to move up the date of the wizard competition. Apparently, because Max is so far ahead of his siblings, he has the authority to change the date of the competition, and since Alex and Justin do not have enough points to participate, Max would become the family wizard by default. Hey guys, so I moved up the final wizard competition to Monday at 4pm. Let's just get this thing done, right? <laughs> what? Max moves the competition up to a week from that day, and obviously Alex and Justin were not happy with that decision. Both Alex and Justin disguise themselves as Max in an attempt to trick the officer to move the competition back to its original date. However, when the original Max shows up unexpectedly, all three Maxes start fighting and during the commotion, Max is accidentally turned into a little girl. The competition official, after witnessing all that confusion, announces that the competition will remain on the original date. This happened here, but Monday is off. <laughs> The original Russo family wizard competition date stands. So in this episode, what was always just an implication is outrightly stated explicitly, which is that the Russo family wizard has a set date in time that everyone is aware of. They all know exactly when the competition will take place. Now, the only thing that the siblings need to worry about is ensuring that they are eligible to participate by the time the competition date rolls around. Throughout the final season, Alex and Justin were both successfully able to rejoin the competition. Justin focused on his delinquent classes, and Alex, well, Alex is just naturally awesome and was able to get back in. But I want to take a little break here because there is something else about this show that really frustrated me, and that is Justin Russo. He's a terrible brother, a horrible friend, and just a downright despicable human being. I really hate Justin. And it's really frustrating because all of the reasons I dislike Justin were not present in the beginning of the show. Justin's really unlikable characteristics really start showing up in the final season. Justin and Alex had always had a very love-hate relationship. They're super competitive with each other and teases each other constantly. Yet, they're still always there for each other when the other needs help. And you can tell that despite their constant bickering, they truly do love each other and care for each other. The problem is, by the time we reach the latter part of the series, Justin becomes a massive dick. Justin was always kind of a know-it-all, and even in season 1, he openly expressed taking great pride in being able to fix Alex's problems and thinking he's better than his siblings. That trick gets dialed up to an 11 by the time we reach season 4, as Justin becomes increasingly selfish, arrogant, and condescending towards his siblings. I think the moment Justin really became insufferable is during the episode Wizard of the Year. So context, in a previous special, Wizards vs. Angels, Justin falls in love with an angel of darkness. 
who turns him evil and convinces him to steal the moral compass. He delivers the moral compass to the head of the Angels of Darkness, Gorog, who turns the compass to evil, making everyone in the world do evil things. Alex, despite being under the influence of the compass, tries to save her brother and in the process defeats the Angels of Darkness. For her heroism, she's awarded Wizard of the Year, which really frustrates Justin. Throughout the whole episode, he goes on rants about why he felt he should have been rewarded Wizard of the Year instead of his sister. And at the end, he was only remorseful of how he behaved because it only further hurt his chances of being reinstated in his family's wizard competition. But honestly, as insufferable as Justin was in that episode, it was still somewhat consistent with his character of feeling he's so much better than his siblings. That wasn't even the worst of it. The moment where it really became fuck Justin for real was in an episode we actually already talked about. Season 4, episode 19, Justin's back in. At this point, Alex and Max are way ahead in the running to become the family wizard, and Justin really only has one chance to get back in, and that is to successfully help the delinquents he's been tutoring matriculate into Wistick. Alex offers to help Justin by assisting in the tutoring of the delinquents. She pushes Justin to let them take their final exam to get back into Wistick, believing that they're ready. In the end, all the delinquents fail the final exam, and Alex suspects that there must be something wrong, because she herself helped quiz them and knew they were ready. Justin, without skipping a beat, immediately blames Alex for the delinquents' failure. He then goes on to say that not only is it her fault that they failed, but that she did to sabotage him and ensure that he would never get back in the competition so she could become the family wizard. And that's where Justin just lost me forever. For him to even imply that after everything they've been through, the countless times Alex has dropped everything to save him, help him, make sure he's okay. Yeah, she makes fun of him and teases him, but Alex constantly shows up for her brother. Also, she's already back in the competition, and she still offered to help tutor the delinquent so Justin could get back in. For him to actually say that this was all part of some evil mastermind plan to ensure Alex would win the competition is crazy. Especially because Justin, more than both of his siblings, has been obsessed with winning the competition. He, more than Alex or Max, really, really wanted to become the family wizard. Like, at that point, I would find it more convincing that he would do something to sabotage Alex than the other way around. Especially because he's already done something like that. Please, Justin, you have your delinquent class to help you get ahead. Just tell me how I can raise my standings in the wizard competition. Are you kidding me? I'll never give you the key to possibly winning the wizard competition. <laughs> Anyways, because Alex is smart... She realizes something had to have been wrong and goes off to investigate. She learns that the delinquents actually all passed the exam and this guy lied to Professor Crumbs because he was jealous of how much praise he was given to Justin or something. Whatever. Doesn't matter. The important thing is that the delinquents passed. The wizard then traps Alex and Justin goes on further to prove what a shitty, terrible person and brother he is. Justin finds out that Alex, his little sister was being held by an evil wizard. And you know what Justin's response was? Fuck her. I don't care, I'm not helping her. <laughs> Justin said fuck her. He just finds out that his little sister has been captured. She could be hurt, she could be tortured, he does not care. Why? Because he thinks it's her fault the delinquents failed. And I'm like, at that point, who cares about the competition? Your sister could be dead. His students literally had to forcibly drag Justin to save his sister. That's how much of a fuck he didn't give. They literally had to force Justin to save his own sister. That's how much of a shit person he is. Anyways, they eventually free Alex and Professor Crumbs learns the truth and Justin's back in the competition, unfortunately. God, he's just so unlikable at this point, I actually wish that he never got back in. Like, he never even apologizes to Alex for blaming her. Fuck Justin. But oh wait, it gets worse. Because in the final episode, during the wizard competition, Harper and Zeke gets kidnapped by a griffin. And again, Justin's like, oh well, my best friend and close family friend are probably gonna die. Who cares? Alex literally has to beg her brother to save them. Like, that's your best friend. You guys formed a whole alien language league together, you're just gonna let him die? 
Anyways, after a lot of convincing, they all go off to save Harper and Zeke. But when they get back, they find out that they ran out of time and the wizard competition was over, meaning no one would become the family wizard. And of course, Justin blames Alex. Again. He makes it a point to be incredibly rude and cruel to her after the competition. Then it turns out that losing the competition was just another convoluted test by Professor Crumbs. You know, Professor Crumbs deserves his own whacking for the complete mess he pulled throughout the series, but that's for another day. Anyways, Max and Justin forgiving Alex meant the competition could go on. And I'm sorry, but if the point of the test was to ensure that they would not let the wizard competition come between them, Justin failed that test. He failed. He turned all his anger and frustration all on Alex. He let the competition come between them, so if anything, he shouldn't be allowed to compete. But this is Disney, so of course he gets to compete in the ridiculousness that is the wizard competition. Which brings me to my next question. What is the wizard competition? So, throughout the show, we never really got much information as to what exactly the wizard competition would be. Just that in order for the siblings to perform well, they would have to take their studies seriously. But it did seem that they still did not know what the competition entailed. The only glimpse we ever got as to what the competition would be like was in the Wizard of Waverly Place movie. In this premature competition, spells were restricted to being only element based, and the first person to catch the magic won. The Wizards movie, even though canon to the show, is never ever mentioned again, even in passing. Also, the conditions were extremely different, so it's not much to go by. But we got our answer during the series finale. The competition is set up like a game show, even having an audience, judges, and a host. In the first round, the Russo siblings are tested on their knowledge of various spells. Initially, Alex does really poorly, and Justin, and surprisingly Max, gets way ahead of her in the round. Eventually, though, Alex is able to catch up to her brothers. I liked this round because it played into the fact that those siblings had to learn various spells, so I like that all of that time spent focusing on wizard training didn't go to waste. Still, it kind of set this idea that the wizard competition was some kind of point system, and the sibling with the most points would win, but this was the only round that utilized points, and we were never even told how much each sibling would need to qualify to move on to the next round. Anyways, all the siblings earned enough points to move on to round 2. I guess. Round 2 tested their knowledge on potions, and each sibling had to correctly concoct a potion using various weird, creepy wizardry ingredients. But actually, I guess that wasn't what this round was about because Professor Crumbs concocted another convoluted test where the siblings had to accept the fact that they all lost the competition and not let it get in between their relationship. Which like, in theory, I guess is a good idea, but also how does that work towards picking a winner if the only way to move on from the round is for both Max and Justin to forgive Alex? And what if Justin never forgave Alex? Would the round just go on indefinitely and nobody would become the family wizard? It seemed like the kind of test you'd want to give before the competition, but not an effective round within the competition itself. Anyways, this round was kind of stupid, especially because everyone blamed Alex, when if anyone should be blamed, it should be Zeke for snooping around and getting him and Harper kidnapped. Also, Justin 100% should have failed this round, but whatever. So all three siblings pass, and the final round is a maze. Ooh. The Russos have to navigate a magical maze with obstacles, and the first person to make it out of the maze wins. I liked this round. It was really cool seeing a lot of callbacks to spell from the previous season. Also, I love that the family wizard basically comes down to who's more resourceful with their use of magic to solve problems, which makes sense why Alex would win. So Justin appears to finish the maze first, and Alex and Max are fine with the results, but right before Professor Crumbs grants Justin full wizard status, he admits that Alex actually won, because she was way ahead of him and turned back to help him because he got his foot stuck. So Alex wins and she's now the Russo family wizard, but Justin also gets to keep his powers because Professor Crumbs announces he's retiring as headmaster of Wistick and wants Justin to replace him. So Alex gets to keep her powers, Justin gets to keep his powers, and Max? Max inherits the family sandwich shop. Yup. All equally great endings. I already had a feeling Alex would win. She was the fan favorite. Selena Gomez was super popular, so that wasn't surprising. By the end of the series, I had really become annoyed by Justin, so I wouldn't say I was happy seeing him get to keep his powers. I was just like, okay, whatever. 
Max doesn't seem to mind being the only one who loses his power, so I guess it's an okay ending for him as well. Oh, also, just another nitpick. But Professor Crumbs does this thing where he raises his wand to grant someone full wizard status, and he touches the wand on their heads and they glow. What was that? Was that purely ceremonial, or was that him actually granting Alex and Justin their full wizard powers? Because in another episode, we already saw how the power transfer works. It's this room where the losers get their powers drained by the winner. Did they stop doing that because of Stevie? I think the more likely answer is that the writers forgot that it was yet another thing they established already. But anyways, that's what the wizard competition is. So there's really only one other important question. Why is there a wizard competition? In a world with magical creatures and wizarding families, why is the wizard competition even a thing? Why can there only be one wizard in a family? Who's making all these rules and why aren't more people challenging this idea? The show somewhat addressed this idea with Stevie's arc. Her whole deal was running out on her family's wizard competition because she lost and didn't want to give up her powers, which is like, okay, fair. You've spent most of your life with these powers and abilities. Why do you have to give them up just because your brother or sister is better at studying than you? Seems pretty stupid. Also, what about wizarding families that only have one child? Do they still have to do a wizard competition, or do they just automatically get to keep their powers? Like, how does that work? Like, if you're an only child in a wizarding family, are you just lucky and fortunate to never have to worry about a wizard competition? Does that also mean that you don't have to go through wizard training because you don't have to compete and you get to keep your powers? The whole idea just seems pretty stupid to me. And the show never even gave a compelling reason for why Stevie was wrong. They just framed her as this bad guy for not wanting to give up something she was born with. But who really benefits from this system anyways? Like, what's the whole point of this? I have seen some online debates about this and there is one theory that Professor Crumbs enforces the wizard competition so he can hold on to power because if everyone got to keep their powers, they might overthrow him. I kind of like this theory, but it doesn't really make sense in the context of the show. Professor Crumbs did say that wizard siblings using their powers at the same time creates incredible power, so that could be the reason. But also, Professor Crumbs isn't like the ruler of the wizarding world. Even though the show portrays him that way, he's just the headmaster of Wistic. I don't think he's the one making all these laws. So who is? Well, we don't know, and we never will. It's just something that apparently has to happen, no matter how nonsensical it is. So, there you have it. The wizard competition in all of its confusing, contradictory mess. It makes sense why there were so many contradictions and mistakes in the last season. The show's head writer and showrunner Peter Morietta was not asked to return for the final season. And boy, you notice a difference immediately. It's like the new writers didn't even bother to watch the first three seasons. Even concepts that they themselves introduced to the final season, they contradict as the season goes on. Still, I gotta say, I really enjoyed rewatching the show to make this video. It still really holds up, and I'd recommend for you guys to watch it too. So, let me know your thoughts, what you think about the wizard competition, and if you actually agree with any of my points and thinks any of it makes sense. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.